Hey kids, it's Mr. Flat here, hope you're well. Out and about on a glorious day for another first ride video. Today, I'm on the 2018 Suzuki GSX-R 125. So if you're interested in this little sports bike, stick around and stay tuned. So time for another of my uh, first ride videos and one of the uh, categories of bikes that I like an awful lot and uh, you'll already know that if you watched uh, many of my videos before are the smaller bike categories. What I like about them is the fact that you can use all the bike. So uh, when I say smaller bike categories I mean anything up to about 400cc machine. Today I'm at the uh, lower end of that uh, cc range if you like on the 125. Uh, the sort of entry level first sports bike you might want to buy from Suzuki for example. Uh, other manufacturers do similar bikes, uh, Yamaha and Honda also have 125 sports bikes, but this one, Suzuki claim, is, has the best power to weight and power to torque ratio of any of them. Now of course that's uh, quite a statement because of course they don't have a great deal of power being a 125 or bags of torque. It's a bit like saying you're the fastest tortoise in the, uh, in the world. But nonetheless, uh, when you haven't got a lot of uh, power to play with, and these put out something like 15 brake horsepower, then if you can cut down the weight, uh, then that's going to make for a more fun bike. And I have to say, I haven't been riding it for that long so far. This is my first ride on the bike. Uh, but it does feel very light, and as a result, very flickable, very manoeuvrable. The handling on it is really, really lovely. So let's go through some of the practical aspects and the things that are immediately strike me about the bike. As I say, I've literally been on the bike for 10-15 minutes so far and this is really just a first impressions review. And uh, the practical things that you notice about the bike, number one is this LCD screen on here. It's really nice actually, it's really clear and it's got absolutely everything you need on there including a proper fuel gauge on the right hand side and the gear position indicator which I like. There's no problem with the clarity, it doesn't look like it's been ill-designed, it's got a uh, rev counter at the top and uh, yeah I just really like that, I think it's neat. That uh, I think that embarrasses some of the much more uh, sophisticated motorcycles I've ridden, so that's really nice. The next thing you notice is the uh, great view out of these mirrors. The mirrors look sort of stalky, as they often are on bikes with fairings, but there's absolutely no vibration in the mirrors whatsoever. And I can see behind me beautifully well, which is what you want mirrors for, obviously. But, you know, sometimes on single cylinder engines, you do get a lot of vibes and the, uh, and the mirrors shake, rattle and roll, but uh, these are absolutely solid. And whilst on that same subject, it is a single cylinder engine, yet I'm really not feeling much in the way of vibes, it really is quite smooth. I don't know if Suzuki have done some clever things with counterbalance shafts and things, but compared to, for example, my Honda CRF, which is a 250 single, this thing just doesn't have any vibrations at all. It's really smooth, it's lovely. So riding position then is quite sporty. Uh, I'm five foot eight, so a sort of medium sized fella, and the bike feels quite small to me. You can move back on the seat, uh, which obviously helps, but uh, I think if you're a tall fella, or lady for that matter, you might find the bike a little bit cramped. You are in a sort of sporty crouch position. Great fun just revving the what sits off this. Um, you are in a sort of a sporty crouch position. If you want to be, you can tuck right in to maximise your speed. But also, um, you know, the handlebars are quite close to your knees, if you like. So you can, you know, here I am sitting almost bolt upright on a sports bike. Your knees are quite uh, quite tucked at an acute angle, so it does feel like a sporty ride. And with these uh, clip-on-esque handlebars, you know, it does feel the business. The seat itself is quite hard. But overall, I wouldn't say the bike is uncomfortable. Hello, the rosas are out in force. Hello, hello. Not nodders. The rosas aren't nodders. But the handling is, as I say, surprisingly nice on here. Sticks to the corners beautifully. It's got Dunlop tyres on here, and it's a lovely warm day. So, lots of grip. Oh, more police, what's going on? Lots of grip about, but it feels great. Anyway, whilst we're on this uh, bit of dual carriageway, I can afford to wander up. Often people ask me on this smaller bike, what is the top speed? So let's get to top gear, which is sick, tuck in. There we go. There's an indicated 71, 72, 74 now. Just about to go uphill. Flat out, nothing behind me. Flat out and tucked in, 76, 77. Uphill now. 
but an indicated 77 miles an hour uphill, flat out when you're tucked in. Oh, it's all 78 there. Which actually is ample, isn't it? I mean, I don't recommend you go around riding flat out on any machine. But uh, if you do find yourselves on these faster roads, this bike now that look, I've got enough power to overtake slower vehicles, which is great. The brakes seem absolutely fine on here. I mean, it is a light bike, so they don't need to be stonking great bike brakes, but they seem to work absolutely fine. And when you wind it back up on these faster roads, so I have to say the weather protection is pretty good on here. This fairing really does work, particularly when you tuck down. The air just goes straight over my head. I've got no buffeting and not a lot of noise. So yeah, I think a, a big thumb, thumbs up as far as the bike is concerned at the sort of top end of its power spectrum. It's perfectly usable on, on these faster roads. Ah, first fan of the day, excellent. So there's uh, nothing behind me for a little while. I'm just going to check the back brake. Actually, the back brake seems quite effective. So no problems with the brakes. Suspension-wise, it's uh, obviously it's very budget suspension. It's non-adjustable. You just get what you get. And I suppose it's set, um, if they're sort of a, a line with hard at one end, soft at the other, this is set slightly towards the harder end, which I guess you would expect for a sports bike. But I have to say, so far, it's not got too badly out of control. It feels quite nice. It's not so hard that it sort of jars your fillings out your head. But it is, uh, you know, hard enough that, as I say, the handling is, is really nice on it. Partly, I think, because of its really lightweight. But, uh, you know, the suspension seems completely adequate for the type of bike that it is. Now, for a small bike, which is uh, obviously built to a budget, it's got some uh, quite impressive features, actually. Number, I've already mentioned the, uh, the display that I really like. But one of the other things that I've not seen on a bike of this capacity before is it's got a keyless ignition. Look. So I've got the key fob in my pocket and, uh, you know, it works as keyless ignition works. So not something I've ever really thought was a brilliant uh, invention, to be fair. It's one of those um, solutions to maybe a problem that doesn't exist. But nonetheless, the fact they've got keyless ignition on a bike of this capacity, I think should be applauded. It's also got quite a sophisticated Bosch ABS system. And... Uh, I'm not sure whether Suzuki put it on because, it's, uh, because it is sophisticated and the bike needs it. I suspect they'd rather put it on. It's a, it's a Bosch one, by the way, did I mention that? They put it on because it's uh, very, very lightweight. And again, it keeps, uh, keeps the weight down and means that uh, Suzuki can continue to make that claim against the competition that this is the, uh, the best power-to-weight ratio in its class. So I, I have to say, overall, I'm very impressed with this little 125. I expected it to be really quite uh, lacklustre and uh, you know have no go at all but when you wind her up she goes fine handling's beautiful and uh, it doesn't really feel like a 125 it does feel like a proper sports bike i sort of assumed it'd feel like a very slow bike just with sports bike kit on it but no it does feel like the real mccoy it looks like the real mccoy as well so uh, in a minute i'll find a little spot and we'll do a walk around and i'll show you the bike from the outside I need to get rid of this van perfect bike in traffic if you want a little commuter machine to weave through traffic on your way to work of the morning this would be brilliant because it feels nice and narrow it's very light and you can get your feet down on the deck really really easily so it's a practical uh, machine to get you to work and back every day and to have a little bit of fun on and to save money well is this better value than getting a train ticket or what as i mentioned earlier the uh, engine is as smooth as you like for a single I mean, in terms of its noise, uh, Suzuki have done a top job in quietening it down. When you're rolling at these sort of normal driving speeds, what, doing 50 miles an hour here in a bit of traffic, then really all I can hear is wind noise through my crash helmet. There's not much noise from the engine. So although the uh, exhaust on here standard looks kind of cute, I think I would, uh, I and probably every other bar of the bike, would possibly get an aftermarket can just to give it a bit more sound, a bit more oomph. I know it sounds silly, but uh, it's ridiculous how much more powerful <laughs> a bike feels when you have a louder exhaust on it. I know it's juvenile, but that's just how it works. But if you happen to like really quiet bikes, then this is for you, because, listen, you can barely hear it. One thing I'm not so keen on the bike when you're sitting upright and you're looking down at the, the bike in front of you is, uh, is the yoke. It just looks very wimpy. I mean, of course, as I mentioned before, the bike is built to a budget. So they're not going to put, you know, amazing um, hardware on the machine. They can't afford to. But that, to me, that black yoke just looks a bit flimsy. 
as do these handlebars. Just look a little bit rubbishy to me. But uh, I'm right a point, and you're not looking at them that much because you're normally lent forward. I'm sat bolt upright, so I can show you this. We have to cut corners somewhere, and that's one of those areas. Other than that, though, so far I've not found anything about the bike that I don't like. The clutch on the bike is lovely and light, as you maybe would expect. I mean, this is a brand spanking machine, so it should feel good, but yeah, the clutch is lovely. And the gearbox, nice and positive. I haven't had a single false neutral or any trouble finding neutral. Overall, the riding experience feels much, much more like a bigger bike or a bike costing a lot more money. There's no, it doesn't feel like it's lacking in quality other than that top yoke that I mentioned about, but the riding experience itself is top quality. Having whinged a bit about the quality of the yoke and the uh, fit and finish of the handlebars. Oh, hello, another, hello sir, no, not a nodder. Um, they're not, never nodders anymore, are they? I don't know. I moaned a bit about the, uh, the handlebars. Uh, what I would say is the switch gear works really nicely. Of course, it's very simple. There's nothing fancy about this bike. There's no clever riding modes and things. So there's not lots and lots of switch gear. But that that's here works really nice and positively. It's in the right place. So the horn and the indicators are where they should be, unlike on some Hondas, for example. Uh, and yeah, it works, feels really positive. So, yep, thumbs up for the switch gear too. Alrighty, let's uh, pull in at the pub car park over there. And we'll do the walk around in the usual way. Easy to find neutral. Dinky little stand that comes down nice and easy to find. And to turn her off, the usual thing. And then the keyless to the middle middle bit there. While that blue light's on, that shows it's active. That goes off after a while, and then you wouldn't be able to start it. Uh, I'll show you how that works in a second. All right, here we go then. The uh, GSXR 125. Now this particular model, as you can see, is in black, which is probably my least favourite colour of the models that they do. They do the, they do it in white, and they do it as the race rep blue. And I think uh, if you're going to have one of these, then the blue is the way to go. But in terms of the styling of the bike, if you ignore this colour, which as I say I don't like, the styling is bang on. It is properly GSXR. It looks like a GSXR looks. Um, maybe mated with the old Triumph Daytona, the way the uh, the way the front looks. But I think it looks really good. Anyway, let me get the uh, the phone out and uh, we'll do the walk around and I'll talk you through the spec in the usual way. Okay, here she is then, uh, the GSX R125. Uh, let's start with the important stuff, so the engine, as I mentioned, single cylinder liquid cooled unit, 124cc, uh, four stroke fuel injected, it being a Suzuki, I suspect it'll be absolutely bulletproof. Puts out 15 PS, which uh, I checked on the internet works out at 14.8 HP, if we're being pedantic. Uh, at 10,000 RPM. You really do have to rev this thing up, it has to be said, to get the best out of it, but that's part of the fun. Um, MCN, when they tested, got 72.7 miles, miles per hour out of it. Uh, I guess that was GPS verified. As you saw, I got a bit quicker indicated earlier. Uh, so certainly it's good for at least 70 miles an hour. Torque-wise, 11.5 Newton meters at 8,000 RPM. So not huge numbers, of course, it is just a small bike, but it doesn't feel wimpy and underpowered. It feels like a proper sports bike, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, let's look at the brakes. Uh, we've got discs all round. Um, they are quite small and thin as you can see but that's all you need on such a lightweight bike. Uh, and now you can see the ABS ring as well which is the, uh, the as I say, quite a sophisticated Bosch system on here. Uh, and on the rear, got a little disc on there as well and we can see the fairly basic swing arm. But they all work well. Suspension, as I mentioned, nothing special. Uh, Non-adjustable uh, right way up forks for a change. Uh, but they seem adequate for the bike. Doesn't really get out of shape until you really get onto bumpy roads and push it hard around corners. But uh, I've, uh, I've found that completely adequate. Uh, seat height on here is nice and low. 785 millimetres. Uh, so I'd get my feet on, on the deck. No worries. I'm 5 foot 8 with a 32 inch inseam. And uh, there's absolutely no worries with the bike height. Weight wise, 134 kilograms. I don't know if that's wet or dry, I suspect dry, but any, either way, it feels super light. My goodness, there's a bike that needs a tail tidy, look at that. <laughs> Tank capacity, it'll only hold 2.4 gallons, but uh, it will do a claimed 122 miles per gallon. I don't know who's going to get that out of it, but certainly you could probably get near three figures out of it, so you're going to get a good range. Electronics wise, uh, it's got the Suzuki Easy Start system, which is basically when you press the starter button, you only have to dab it and it will start, you don't have to hold it until it's actually started. It has the keyless ignition that I talked about, uh, it's got the nice little LCD um, 
panel and the ABS as I've talked about. And that's pretty much it. Price on the road £4,099 according to the website. That puts it slap in between the competition which is the Yamaha YZF125 and the Honda CBR125. It's a little bit more pricey than the Honda, a little bit less than the Yamaha. You can get various accessories for it. There's an accessory pack, costs another 239 includes things like a seat cowl, a double bubble screen, a tank pad, hill plates, things like that. Okay, so that's uh, that's basically it. Before I uh, put the phone away, let me just show you a bit more about this. Um, uh, what's it? Keyless ignition. Uh, so this is obviously the keyless ignition area. What you do is you, uh, you press it to bring it alive, turn it to that side there, and then you just press the easy start button and the bike starts absolutely fine. And I've got the key fob in my pocket and there's that uh, LCD screen that I was raving about. And then the unusual thing, or the slightly different thing about the uh, keyless on this, if I turn it off, which I'm gonna do just by turning it, what you can do is, if you need to uh, access under the seat and stuff, you need the key, you literally just turn it to that part there and you can pull this out and you can see there you've actually got a key. Isn't that wild? And it just so goes back in again. And then, if uh, if the fob's away from it, you can't pull this out. So uh, yeah, quite clever that. Anyway, there we go. All right then, that's the uh, that's the walk around. Let's jump back on and get this puppy home. All right, and uh, just to show you my feet, look, I'm sat on it, bike upright, both my feet flat on the deck. All righty, let's get this show on the road then. Turn that again. Press that. Look at that. We're off. It even had two goes at it. They're very clever. That. All right. So when I say uh, get this puppy home, that is because I'm very pleased to say Suzuki have uh, lent me this bike as my next long-termer. I haven't got it for too long, I've just got it for a couple of weeks, or not even quite a couple of weeks, so I'm not going to be able to do uh, extensive living with type review on the bike, but uh, I'm going to be able to get to know the bike a little bit better than if I was just doing a test ride. Let's see if I can do a little Yui here. Yeah, turning circle is nice on here. So if you're interested in the uh, little GSXR 125, do stick around and stay tuned to the channel for more videos coming on it soon. But certainly on this first impressions review, I have been very impressed with it. It's smooth to ride. It uh, feels like a proper sports bike. It's well equipped. Everything works nicely. At the moment, I can't really find much to not like other than maybe the fit and finish of the, uh, the yoke here, but that's a personal thing. Okay, that's it for now. Hope that's been of some interest. I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missed and Fly. Cheerio.